Hey everyone, welcome back to Pouring Takes. I'm Charlie Van. And I am Rhea, and we are here for some therapy. Right, yes. Charlie? Much needed therapy, and we're heading right into the holiday weekend. So there's nothing very jolly about this past Sunday's Cowboys game, but let's talk about something that is a little bit more cheerful. What are we drinking? Uh, we've got the Shiner Holiday Cheer today. I've actually never had this before. Really? It is a... Um, it is a classic around the holiday season. Shiner, Texas. Here we go. Seems to be a lot of people's, you know, Cheers. favorites usually during, you know, during this season. You know, last week we had the St. Arnold Christmas sale, which is one of Ooh. my go-tos. But this is this has got a nice kind of plum kind of peaches. Mm. Peaches and peaches. Pe pecans. Is it pecans or it's pecans? Peaches, yeah. Peaches and pecans. Pecans, not so pecans. Peca that is a debate. Is it a pecan? Is it pecan? pecan tomato, tomato. Pecan. But it's very delicious. It yeah, is very you, delicious. That, that, that peach smacks you in the mouth, kind of like Buffalo did to Dallas. Good segue. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she, she got the puns going. Well, let's talk about it. You know, we do need a little therapy session here. Um, was definitely not the result we thought, even though Bills were favored, but only very close, like by two points, I think it was, going I, in. I hate to say it. This game was over in the second quarter. Yeah. I felt like this game kind of was over right within a few minutes of this first quarter. Just mentally, just everything that could go wrong, especially penalty-wise, started going wrong. So out of those three major penalties that continued drives for the Buffalo Bills, which one would you say was like the absolute dagger? Yeah, so I mean, I think right away, Sam Williams. And here's the reason why. That set the tone. That set the tone of... You're talking about the, the yeah, blocked the block punt. punt. Yeah, sorry, the that, block punt. And then it turned into roughing the kicker. Exactly. That was the mental snowball effect or domino effect because that, and I just felt like that defense could never recover, and it, I felt like it did kind of trickle over to what the offense was able to do or not, not do in this case. For me, I think it was the roughing the passer on Josh mm. Allen to see him just go down. He flopped. Mm. He was barely touched, and he flopped, and it was just like you saw the entire defense was so dejected. Yeah, and my, my whole problem with that, too, the <coughs> Bills know what a bad call game is just because yeah. we saw it. And they got, I mean, yes, they lost against it, but they should have won. They still played their butts off. For us, it's like the light switch went off. Like, we can't overcome this. I saw this in, 20, in 2021 against the, uh, against the uh, Raiders. Both teams had 14 penalties each. Mm. And we just could not mentally. Now, it wasn't like that. You know, it was close. But it's just like, for us, it, that's the adversity that we're having a hard time overcoming. Yeah, I, I'm with you there. And, like, I felt like going into this game, we found out we secured a playoff spot. Mm -hmm. What was it, two hours before the game started? Yeah, about two hours. Yeah, about half time of the first games is mm. when we found out. Do you think that played into the, like, the lack of energy? I don't think there was a lack of preparation, but I'm going to say there was, like, a lack of energy. There was – it felt like they didn't really – have to fight for anything, but they also embarrass themselves. Well, I mean, I, I think it's easy to say that, you know, but with the division being so close on the line, I don't think that they let that. I mean, if you've talked to Dak or anything, I don't think they really let that. I think this is, we've seen this before earlier in this season, right when we were starting getting momentum, uh, you know, with the Niners. This is just that on the road mental blunder, and we keep seeing it season after season. Now, we haven't been blown up like this before on the road, but still, I mean, outside of the Niners, but still, I, there's, there's this where we inconsistency and in keeping momentum going. It's the ugly thing that keeps happening every year. You think that they overlooked Buffalo in certain ways? Or do you think the game plan was just rough? Because, you exactly. know, you expected Josh Allen to throw mm. at least 20, 25 times, and he threw 17 times? Yeah. I mean, they – exactly, physicality. They, we weren't – we didn't match their physicality. And that's not something the Bills usually do. That, the way the Bills play is abnormal because, like you said, it's always a huge Allen to Diggs, you know, uh, or day. Gabe, or Gabe, Gabe Davis, yeah. But with that, we've seen – that's why he's also in the 13 interception, too. Because, yeah. It's a gamble. Right. Um, high risk. Yeah. High reward. But they were like, ooh, we can, if you watch that Seahawks game, we can run on Dallas. We can really run down the so, throat. So you're telling me Dallas was exposed. Exactly. But I think this isn't anything that shouldn't have been already. Like, this is our ongoing problem that we still have never addressed. We just got a little lucky with Philly because they turned over the ball three times. 
Uh, but yeah, but our defensive line put that pressure on Jalen Hurts, yeah. and they weren't able to put that pressure on uh, Josh Allen or on any of the running backs. No, that, I mean that's true too. But I feel like there's just this. I, I said this. I've said this before. Where if we can't get a turnover right away, it's like we just don't know how to do anything else on defense. And you know your defense isn't always going to get turnovers, mm-hmm. but when you're playing a, this was a dirty game. Yeah. It's rainy. It's cold. It's muddy. You know. That is when you're supposed to use your run game, which is exactly what Buffalo did. Whereas when we had the ball, we couldn't move the ball to save our lives. No, and um, you know one thing we were talking about leading up to this uh, before we knew like the weather, like what is the environment? If it's snow, run the ball. It's also the same with rain, but it wasn't that bad. So you can't use any inclement weather. That's all. No, no, I'm not. I'm not saying it was inclement weather. I'm just saying that the rules you follow, football Mm -hmm. rules, is when it's wet, you run the ball because it's hard to throw, it's hard to catch when it's cold and rainy. That's it. I I, I think it it could be sunny, and they were going to have the same game plan. I I think they they've been watching tape all season, especially what you know the Niners were able to do to us, and realize. Oh, let's just run. Hank going to stop it. Hankins is out. You know, who, who, I feel bad that he's really our only guy that we. It's that big impact. And this is guy. where you're missing Van Der Esch as well. Exactly. Which, if you watch this time last year against Jaguars, the moment both of those were out, game changer, lost in overtime, and it really killed our momentum for a couple of weeks um, until that wild card when we got both back. So that's a problem because both those guys aren't playing, and we need other people to to step up. And of course, there's been talks of, you know how certain position players are in the scheme are in bad areas. But, I mean, that's a Dan Quinn right there then. So how do you feel about the Bills moving forward? Do you think they've put their names back into playoff contention? I know they're still, quote, unquote, in the hunt. Mm -hmm. They have uh, quite a few games that they need to make up over these last three. But do you feel like they're more legit because they beat us? Or do you think it's a one-off outlier that they beat us and they are who we think they are? I don't think it's a one-off. I mean, they should have beat the Eagles, and they beat the Chiefs. No matter about that offside, they, they were ahead of that game. Right. I mean, they adapted. I think because we're so used to them starting off very dominant, even like last season, but they showed that they can adjust. And, you know, there were scary moments, but they adjust, and this is why they're a good football team. You know, and <laughs> close to – this actually may be the most, like, red-hot team right now. Uh, especially in the AFC, so it's just can they get in there. So, fun fact, the hottest active teams right now are the San Francisco 49ers, who I think have gone like 5-0 and in their yeah. last five, mm. uh, and the Indianapolis Colts, who have gone 4-1. and Corner Minshew, baby. It's the mustache. It's we, the mu- I love his character and personality. Well, and, and, and actually, it's just, you know, their coach, the first-year coaching there, they, they've made adjustments and adapt. And there were some scary times about Jonathan Tutt. He's back in the mix. It's Michael Pittman. He's not even playing yeah. right now. They have, uh, they've been running behind Zach Moss. Oh, that's right. That's right. So it looks like Jonathan Taylor a little. <laughs> <laughs> but Michael Pittman, I mean, they've been, they've been able to make it work. They're 8-6. and six. Um, They're right there, I think, in that 7-6 <coughs> spot as of right now. Um, I don't yeah. know that they've locked it yet. Well, think. we'll talk about that more yeah. when we get into the NFL playoff picture. Um, in terms of this past game, mm. how do you move forward, right? As the Cowboys, all right, you just got absolutely gashed on the run. Mm. Your offense did nothing. Your defense is, you know, showed a hole. Mm. You're about to go to Miami where they have outstanding running backs, not just the top two you're thinking about. Mozart leading is the leader for the Dolphins mm. in franchise history for touchdowns. Yeah. You've got this amazing rookie, uh, a chain behind him. You got Jeff Wilson behind him. And then they activated one more guy, Chris Brooks, because we're going to be a run first team because we may or may not have Tyreek Hill. So what adjustments do you make going into this game? Well, you you take a note of whatever you did post Niners because that was as bad of a loss too, and they they did adjust. And, uh, I mean, you just got to stop the run, find a way to stop that run. I, I The big thing is when we're not talking as much is – the offense has been actually the hottest commodity since that Niners, not the defense. Right. Because um, there's been times when some Because everybody of those, was questioning Dak, yeah. was questioning Michael Carter's So Carthus that play didn't falling. get off the ground. That's the problem. <coughs> like, we know that we can't stop the run for much. It, it just, it is. But if our offense isn't, I mean, it, I mean, it, it, <laughs> it's, it's bad. So I think you'll see the offense step up. I think that's going to be the adjustment. You can only do so much on defense. And I think they're going to play better weather-wise. Mm. I know you mm. didn't. You said don't call, bring up the inclement weather, but it, it's Miami. It's going to be like 75 and sunny, maybe rainy. Who knows? 
And there are Cowboys fans that travel up to Miami and in Florida. So, I mean, it, it's... Heck, I almost did. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, it, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying the weather can't be a factor. I mean, that's definitely the perfect weather if you want to be in. But, I, I mean, just going back, I just feel like the, the Bills saw the hole and, like, let's tack on it. But I do see the, our offense adjusting. It, that's going to be the big thing. I think for me, I need to see the defense adjust mm -hmm. more than the offense. I think our offense is always going to be there. Like you said, these last mm -hmm. couple games, they've really shown out, moved themselves into the top five. Defense is kind of taking a backseat. I, like you said, I need to see turnovers. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that Tua is turnover prone because we said that about Josh Allen. But Tua does make some bad decisions at the mm -hmm. last second. And especially if they don't have Tyreek Hill, what I saw in the game against Tennessee is that they forced the ball to Jalen Waddell a lot. Mm. And Jalen Waddell is going to be matched up with Deron Bland, most mm -hmm. likely because slot corner, slot receiver. Mm -hmm. um, the other guys don't worry me too much. You got what? Braxton Barrios is their wide receiver three. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean. Cedric Wilson. Cedric yeah, Wilson oh. might burn us. That I'm a little afraid of. Oh, you put Gilly on him right there. Uh, but, I mean, and my, my, my end concern with Deron Bland, we saw what happened with DK. Yeah. That's the only thing. Because Waddle is very long, very rangy. And, and that, fast. And now, maybe you switch up with Gilly because that's, you know, or – I would, you know what? If you put Bland on on Cedric, I, I see a pick right there. Nothing against Cedric, but if I had to go between Waddle and Cedric on who who you're going to more easily get the pick, I'm going to say that. But I guess we'll just have to see. We we do need a big game out of him though. So do we know if Tyreek is in or out? There's there. I don't think it's 100. percent It's questionable. It's probably going to be game time decision. So yeah. what was really interesting to me, and I keep bringing up this Tennessee game because I feel like the Jets game was a wash. To be perfectly yeah. honest, they played the Jets last week. Tennessee the week before. Tennessee came into Miami. Tyreek Hill was burning them for the first two quarters and then did something to his ankle and had to leave the game. Mm -hmm. Their play call adjustment was very strange. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike McDaniel was literally forcing throws, and that's why Tua had an interception, allowed Tennessee to get back in the game. Defense couldn't hang on. So what I saw from that is, you know, as long as the Cowboys convert on third down, get in those third and short situations on offense, but also, I, I think the key to shutting them down is shutting down Jalen Waddle. They can't do mm. anything. Well, it, just be aggressive. Like, that is one thing from they, this build. And that was the other thing. And right. Physicality. And, physi and that's Tennessee how they were twice. Tennessee was very physical the, with Miami. And that's how we were twice with the Eagles. Uh, and, and, and Seattle, uh, as far as our front four goes and that. I mean, like, we just need to smack them. You know? Um, and, and two is one of those guys... Definitely one of the best quarterbacks in the league. But if you can put him on some duress, that's where the, some of those decisions and that pressure, um, we just need to be physical. Yeah, I agree. So who is your X factor for this game? Uh, my X factor, I'm going to say Tank. tank I'm going to say okay. Tank right up there because he has been, and he stepped up in that Seahawks and definitely that Philly game. He's the leader, and his presence means so much. I'm going to say Tank. Okay, I'm going to go with Jake Ferguson. And the yeah. reason why is I feel like, you know, Xavier Howard and Jalen Ramsey are going to do a really good job. Xavier Howard's questionable. He's going to play. Yeah. Um, they're going to do a really good job with CeeDee Lamb. And they're going to do a good job mm -hmm. with Brandon Cooks and Michael Gallup. I think their wide receivers are going to struggle. However, if you go to Jake early and often, that's going to open up the rest of the offense mm -hmm. and give you that downfield attack. I think it's going to go down – to Jake Ferguson and like Brandon Cooks, I don't see CD su succeeding this weekend. And I'm so sorry because we love Sidarius in this house. Well, and that's one thing too we were missing is not a lot of tight end action and some drops. I you love know. some tight end action. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, number 87 is playing like one of the best tight ends this year. In yeah, the he's league. top five, yeah. top five, easily. So definitely his success. I mean, maybe you use a little scoon maker just for some diversion a little bit. Um, He's definitely there to block, but he, I, I, I feel like you can sneak him in some plays. I still would use some of the running. I, I mean, they're going to yeah. have to. Yeah, but, I mean, <coughs> we, we kind of, like, the, there's been games where we've diverted for him. and we got so much excited when we see the Ferguson. So, I'm just saying don't don't get too far from that. But, yeah, no, I mean, you're right. And uh, I would say Jalen Talbert and, or Brooks, maybe throw them in there, too. Yeah, mix it up. Mm. Uh, Turpin? Turpin time? Turpin, exactly. That guy's fast. And he's the wild card. Yeah. Like, he's the one you don't always expect because, oh, well, here's this return guy. But he's fast. He can catch. For yep, he's time. got great hands. Yeah. Um, all right. So Miami is favored by a single point. <laughs> um, how do you see this going down? And 
I don't know. I need to look this up because now I'm curious because I'm a numbers person. But when the spreads are real tight, I feel like those are the scarier games because we've had a bunch of small spreads, whether it was the Giants in week one or even the Commanders. Like we had some close ones. Yeah. And those are the ones that we blew out. Last week was a two and a half spread. Yeah. Uh, two and a half point spread. So Miami favored by one. What do you think? I am going to go with the Cowboys close. And here's the reason why. One thing that I've seen, we don't lose back-to-back. -back. And I think Mike McCarthy does find a way to make adjustments. It might not always be the most consistent, but, you know, I feel like what they're going to dig in and they're going to realize that was embarrassing. We're better than that. They have shown they're better than that. They beat winning teams. We have not seen that from the Dolphins. And, and you know, I think Sean McDermott is a much better coach than Mike McDaniel. Love Mike McDaniel, but he's good at making those adjustments. I haven't seen that with the Dolphins yet. Don't get me wrong. I know it's a way game. But I believe we're, we're going to get it back. Because we know we're also, here's how, we're still right there number one in the division. <coughs> yeah, especially with Philly losing yeah. late last week. That mm -hmm. lights a fire under your ass. And they could lose again with one of the Giants games coming up. Oh, we talked about Tommy Cotton yeah. last week. Yeah, um, Here's my take. You hit the nail on the head at the beginning of your explanation. Mike McCarthy is a veteran coach. Mm -hmm. Mike McDaniel, love the guy to death. Entertaining as hell on hard knocks. <laughs> He's my watching. favorite. Uh, love that he is literally one of us, yes. right? Like, we could go have a beer with Mikey. Yeah. I call him Mikey McDix. But, um, you know, that matters mm -hmm. when you're in December, January mm -hmm. football. And because I watch a lot of Dolphins games and I've seen the adjustments, the in-game adjustments Mike McDaniel makes, mm -hmm. not nearly on the level as Mike McCarthy this season. Yeah. So... I feel like that's our greatest strength in this game is going to be coaching. Yeah, and, and, and well, another thing we didn't mention earlier, their O-line is severely beat up too, and that's where I think we can eat a little bit more. But, yeah, I mean, I think, and Dan Quinn knows how to adjust too. And two is not mobile. And two is not mobile, and, and that's perfect. You know, and Dan Quinn knows, they, they're both veteran coaches. They've both been there, you know, at Super Bowl, and they've had to make those adjustments. So I, I feel confident. Um, that we will. I think he'll be close. Could be your guy, Brandon Aubrey. Um, I do love Brandon I, Aubrey. I think that point, Butter, I think that one point goes in our favor because I, I, I think we're also not always the best first half team either all the time. Yeah, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, yeah. for sure. And uh, I'm with you. I, I do think we pull this one out. Like I said, I had a feeling we would drop to Buffalo, mm -hmm. but we'll get this W in Miami. Do you think it'd be similar, maybe not by the point differentiation, but like Seahawks where defense will have to work extra hard, but you do see the offense rolling right away? Yeah, I think so. I think the offense mm -hmm. will get comfortable early, mm -hmm. um, but so will theirs. Yeah, and that's how the Chargers game was too. I yeah. mean, it was, it, was, it was neck and neck, but they and zigged when we Honestly, left. outside of playing the Jets, Miami hasn't really blown anybody out. No, and they've it's been not, on the other receiving too. Yeah, it, it's not, you know, they have a really great offense, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but it, it's not as impressive as our offense. It's definitely underachieved compared to, because we touted them, and they're still around, but they it's more for them to win. Like, the stakes are higher on them because we still, you know, we have the lines and that, and they have to. Because if you do not beat a team with a winning record, and I'm taking this also from Acho, but it's true, it, it's going to not be a good precedent it's going in the playoffs. Okay. So we both have wins. We both have tight games. Um, and we both got X factors. So I guess that wraps up what we're thinking about with Miami. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Hopefully it'll be a good Christmas for all of us. Yes. Okay. Let's move on to the NFL as a mm. whole. Uh, as usual, some crazy stuff happened last weekend, shifting our uh, power rankings around. What are you looking at for this week? Yeah, going in, as far as uh, my top five power rankings, I got Niners number one, of course. Like, they're, they're the team to beat. Yeah, I would say Niners, everybody else. Yeah, and, and it's always a three-way tie, I feel, because, you know, nobody else has looked as good as they have, especially post them getting healthy. They look even greater. Uh, number two is going to be the Ravens for me. I got. I think they still hold that number two. Um, I'm gonna say uh, number three right now. The Bills, even though they're not in, you know, they have a lot of work, but they're gonna. But they are a complete. Team. They are, and 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 <coughs> you know, they are one that nobody will want to see. Get not just in that, there. they have signature wins on their resume that yeah. other teams don't. They beat yeah. Kansas City. They beat us. It makes sense. Exactly, and. Um, and once again, if you believe in moral victories, could have said the same with the Eagles game, too. And they beat the Dolphins. Yeah. They beat the Dolphins. So they're number three. 
I say we're number four. Uh, we're still, still number one. Still have us in the top yeah. five. Well, I mean, we're still, we still beat the Eagles. We still beat the Seahawks. We're number one in our division. So right as of right now, uh-huh. you got, there's been bad losses all across the league. I'm not going to let just one. They, they, you know, I still firmly believe right now in this team right now. Postseason, we'll get there. But, hey, they're number one in their division. I got to give it to them. I mean, I think number five – that's the one that's open. That's hard. Because I, I kind of still think, I mean, the Dolphins are still right there. But how about the Colts? You put the Colts there, mm-hmm. a.k.a. the second hottest team in the league. Yes. I, I think right now they're, 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 they're heating up. I'm trying to think. Who else do we like? I mean, I mean, Texans are kind of banged up too right now. I mean. Texans won a very gutsy game. Do you think Jaguars drop down now? Yes. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and I think Trevor's hurt again. He's still coming back from concussion. Well, his was an ankle, now concussion protocol. Uh, I mean, that fifth one is so wide open. It's a pick em. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, speaking of those Texans, um, they've got the Browns this week. And the Browns are another good team that's, like, on the up and up. Oh, I know. Uh, Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco. Talk about experience. Stepped in. That mm-hmm. offense is running really well. The defense is literally top five. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's going to be a really interesting matchup uh, with tons of playoff implications, right? Uh, how do you see that one shaking out? Man, that is a, that is a good one right there. I'm going to go Browns, though. Yeah, um, I think so, too. This is a game where you really do need a C.J. Stratton, and I think it, he's still, I think, questionable, right, or out. I've played I haven't seen the latest report. Questionable. Yeah. He, he was still struggling to get through concussion. But I'm going to say even with C.J. Stroud right now, the, the Browns are definitely streaking. And they got one of the most experienced quarterbacks in the league who's been there, who's won it. And you could tell him taking over. The team just like, there was a little lost hope, and they're like resurged again. And they're going to be a hot wild card team. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that AFC South is very much so up for grabs. Like mm-hmm. you said, Colts could take it. Jaguars are still in it. Uh, Titans make some noise, even mm. though it's, it's very much like the NFC South. Yeah, but a little better, a little better, a little uh, bit better. I think it's a lot a bit better, yeah. actually. I think the the teams in the AFC South are a little bit more talented. Um, most of them have winning records. Mm. Uh, yeah, don't compare them to the NFC South. And I sat through that Falcons and Panthers game last week, and the Panthers pulled out the win against the Falcons. But are the Bucks streaking? Mm. I like the Bucks. You know, I've always liked they, the Bucks. They, they, it's been pretty good. Like it wasn't all gloom and doom now with Brady. I'm not saying it's, but right now they, they're doing their thing. Uh, Giants versus Eagles. And we talked about this last week with Tommy Cutlets. Yeah, I mean, and I'm just trying to remember. Is this, is this in Philly? Um, I'm assuming it's Philly because that's the way I wrote it down. Well, and they have some injuries right now too. And I mean, do you, they lose four in a row? How do you overcome three? They straight? are so dejected. Yeah. I watched Jalen Hurts' press conference today. I thought yeah. he was going to cry on the mic. Well, when he said we weren't committed, which is probably true, you, that's one of those quiet things you don't always say out loud. But it does show what the temperature in the locker room. And I, so we've seen it. Sometimes it is hard for these teams to rally back. I'm going to say. Uh, Coaching. Yeah. I don't think Nick Sirianni has enough experience or has the personality Mm-mm. to be able to, like, rally those guys. Well, even he said we were trying to get the, the you know, off- or offensive pass interference or, or interference, and it's like that's just not something you come out, and that just tells how unraveled he is. Yeah. But this is kind of his character, you know, did overly you, passionate. Did you uh, see the clip um, from New Heights this week? Uh, where Jason Kelsey talks about him getting the false start and how uh, the cameras caught him moving the ball up <laughs> and all of these things. Like, he was like, oh, yeah, I, I should always set my feet first before touching the ball. In that case, I touched the ball first, and I'm sorry, but I need to be more disciplined. Like, Jason Kelsey is, like, the nicest, <laughs> biggest man I've ever seen in my entire life. And even him on his own podcast, I thought was going to cry. Well, and, and he's the leader of that team, you know, and I feel like he's the real coach on that team. He's made, had to make in-game adjustments that we've seen with yeah, he's, Jalen. Yeah, he's, so. uh, he's the leader. He's definitely been one of the reasons why Jalen Hurts has been as successful as he is. I mean, who's calling the protections? Yeah. It's Jason Kelsey. Yeah, I, and, and then you got the Giants. I mean, yeah, they lost this past week, but they still – they're they're playing more for one the passion and two for next year, but they but closing out like how the Lions did last year, getting some wins, signature wins. Um, and who did they play again last week? I watched the game. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, <coughs> yeah. 
It doesn't matter. They lost. Sorry, Tommy Cutlets. Yeah, uh, I know they lost, but I know it was a close one. And yeah. I know Tommy Cutlets got hurt. They brought in Tyrod Taylor. So he, I think, might be questionable going into this game. Concussion protocol. So if Tyrod comes in, I very believe in Ty Tyrod's one of those guys that he is a good quarterback if he can ever step on the field. And, I mean, look what he did with the Texans. That Brandon. poor man has been robbed of a great NFL career. Him and Teddy Bridgewater, you know. And, yes. And uh, who's set to retire after this season. I saw that. You know, to and, coach and, football, by the way, high school well, football. Well, you know, unfortunately, both these guys, their bodies, you know, just it's hard. Uh -huh. But if Tyrod can stay healthy, I actually give them a better chance against the Eagles with Tyrod Taylor. Okay. I, I think we're both on the same page here. We want the Giants to win. Eagles should get back. This is the right kind of get right game. Uh, but we'll be keeping a close eye on it. The last one I pulled out for you Ooh. is is the game. The game of the weekend. Possibly the game of all Super games. Bowl. Yes, preview. exactly. Possibly a Super Bowl preview. Uh, Ravens and 49ers. Everybody's going to be watching this. Mm. Everybody's going to be tuned in. It's going to be like Super Bowl without Beyonce. And all the lights will stay on. If they're not watching this, they're watching It's a Wonderful Life or a Christmas Story because it is Christmas night. Yes. So maybe we'll get some good jolly out of this game. Um, oh, not God. the first time we've, we've seen a Super Bowl preview potentially yeah. uh, you know, before, but uh, this is going to be, huge. I think, a more bigger test for Ravens than is the, the, the I Niners. Agree. And uh, I, I do feel the Niners have a little bit more of those tools, like especially going to run the ball. I think that's going to be the thing. How are they going to – Kind of like CMC. So you know what the Ravens have that nobody in the NFC has? They are so physical. Mm -hmm. They are a different level of physical compared to us, compared yeah. to Philly, compared to Detroit. You know, take whoever you want in the NFC. Ravens are literally going to go nose to, you, nose to nose with you every play. Mm -hmm. And San Francisco hasn't quite been exposed to that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be very interested to see how the battle of the trenches go. Because, yes, I love linemen. I don't know why, but I love to watch those matchups and I want to see like how physical they all get. And if they can get to a Brock Purdy, if they can get mm. to CMC, what if, what if say the 49ers walk away from this game and somebody's hurt? Yeah. That well, is totally that is possible. Their curse. Um, I was going to mention actually the last team to be very physical were the Cowboys last January with them. We saw the pressure that they put on Purdy. I mean, it was a highly defensive And game. it was like they had a hangover going yeah. into it against Philly, yeah. and then even more guys got yeah. hurt. Yeah, so, no, I mean, I, I mean, the Ravens are one of, if not, this is the number two, like one and two, it's arguable defenses. So yeah. I think this is going to be a closer game. I really do, based on that. Um, and then you got Lamar who can run all day too. Yeah, then. Lamar, I'm so tired of people being on Lamar. Lamar is talented. Lamar is not the best thrower, thrower, but he's a great leader. Mm -hmm. And now that he has weapons, he hasn't had weapons in the past. Lamar reminds me of <coughs> Charlie Ward in Florida State. I mean, you know, Charlie wasn't the most accurate thrower, but he can. Is it move. because his name is Charlie? No, because if you if people forget about Trevor Wood because he went NBA and he was he had a. But yes, I give him props. Actually, real quick story. My dad, you know, football right. maniac. He actually called, he said, Charlie Ward's about to get hurt on this play, and he broke his ribs. <gasps> yeah. Because he was so physical in that running. Like, he just would blow right through. He wasn't the biggest guy, you know, in the world. But I, he reminds me a lot of, uh, or Lamar reminds me a lot of him. And, and that's why Florida State, that offense was so great, because the versatility, you know. And so I think Lamar's going to be the X factor in this. Yeah, definitely. To make it at least a game. Yeah, and like you said, this is a potential Super Bowl matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have either one of these teams in your like preseason picks? No. Uh, well, I think I had um, the Niners. I think I had the Niners before in the beginning. But I think I had Niners, Bills. I can't remember. I want to say you had Niners, Bills. I yeah. had Seahawks and I don't even Oh, no. I had, or maybe I had Niners, Chiefs. Probably. That's I, what you yeah, had. Niners, yeah, Chiefs. Yeah. That's what it was. I would have had Seahawks and who? I forgot. I think I said Seahawks, Bengals. We did, yeah. And I think I did agree. I was like, I could see that. Like, you know, I mean, things happen. I'm a big fan of DK Metcalf, okay? They also had, did have some injuries, too. So, yeah. Um, but we'll see because it's exciting. You know what's funny is I actually found that scrap of paper that I wrote down my game-by-game -game predictions mm. on before the season started. And then I also had, like, my – potential playoff picks, and I don't have the piece of paper here with me today. On the next episode, I'll bring it in. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty much on the nose on the NFC, and the AFC is completely messed up. 
and then I miss I've missed three picks this whole yeah, year. Yeah, the AFC's been the more crazy. NFC's pretty similar to last year. I mean, even though if the Eagles are up and down, I mean it's always been Eagles, Cowboys. It's like split it. Yeah. But everybody else, it was pretty common. I feel so it's kind of fun seeing the AFC and scramble. Yeah, and like it, it goes back to the thing I always talk about is like the talent parody, mm -hmm. and like when you can't tell who the best is, that means like it's really competitive and it's more fun that way. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, with basketball, you see all those super teams and you kind of know who the best teams are. In football, we don't have that. In football, literally, any given Sunday, somebody's going to win, right? Yeah. So it's more fun. Anyway, moving on to other sports happenings. Let's get into UFC. Big oh, yeah. pay-per-view card this past Saturday. Uh, we watched it together. Yeah except for the parts where I was throwing up because it was my birthday and I had a great time. You can throw up if you want to. It's, it, it's my party. I can throw up if I want to. That's right. Um, so let's jump into it. Do you, is there a certain fight you want to chat through before we talk about the two uh, champions? Like, what stood out to you? Yeah, I mean, Josh Emmett, man. Yes, uh, big, you called that. Yeah, well, I, 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 his physicality, I mean, Josh Emmett's one of those guys. He's, you know, Team Alpha, man. his wrestling can channel out. He's a way, I mean, look. Hold on, hold on. Josh Emmett beat Bryce Mitchell yeah. by KO, put the guy right in, a in a by seizure, by the way. Which, I mean, that was that was scary. I, I really felt for Bryce there because I've seen a lot of bad, like, gross, like, not, not like where a guy is, like, seizure. But that's how powerful Josh Emmett is. He's that overhand kind of wrestler. And, you know, he's put other guys out. He's been put out kind of in a similar. But I knew with his wrestling, like, if Bryce couldn't get it, that's that's what you gamble with. Right. Boy did, and he needed it, too. This is, is probably the last resurgence. He lost to um, uh, uh, Yair Rodriguez oh, yeah, and yeah. Topura. And Topura, yeah. yeah. That's what I was so thinking. he needs at least one. Now he's calling out Max Holloway. Wouldn't mind that. Holloway's kind of like, as long as Volkanovski has the belt, it's going to be hard for him to yeah, get back. Yeah, for though, sure. So, yeah, I think him, just because I, I think he re-put 145 back on notice. Yep, definitely. Um, got to see Patty Pimblett win against Tony Ferguson. Yeah. As much as we had predicted, I mean, it, it is, it, you never want to call for anybody's career or, or job, but it is, this is eight fights in a row, I think now, seven or eight fights in a row that Tony Ferguson has lost. And there were moments where I think the ref just knowing Tony gave him a little bit more of a chance when he was getting smit, but... He's just not there, the mechanics. And then I was really sad that we didn't get to see Ian Gary and Vincente Luque. Mm -hmm. Ian Gary came down with pneumonia. Yeah, like flu-like symptoms, yeah. I mean, it's going around. But, but, we get to see Ian Gary First, fight our friend, Jeff Neal. Like the rebooking. They the rebooking, uh, yes. Fight. Um, so, yeah, that'll be interesting. That in February. In February. Yep. No, March. Oh, March. It's Miami. Oh, yeah. my, 299, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah 299 right before 300. So, that's a stack card, too. So, yeah, no, we'll, I mean, we'll break that in that fight when it gets closer. But, Shavkat, Rogmanov, I mean, submitting Stephen Thompson, no real surprise there. Do you know he missed his sister's wedding? Yeah, to, to get this fight. I mean, hey, he's got to make that money. He's crazy. Um, and he apparently... Fought injured as well. Yeah, yeah, broken foot. Broken foot, that's yeah. what it was. I mean, but, I mean, he's not going to throw a lot of kicks, and he didn't have to have a lot of, you know, mean scrambles there. I mean, look, Wonder Boy is definitely someone you don't want to stand on the feet very long with. He did exactly what he needed to do, got the rear neck a choke. Where does Wonder Boy go? Well, Michael Venom Page is fighting Kevin Holland. If you're Ooh. a striking fanatic, Michael Venom Page, not looking past Kevin Holland, but versus Stephen Thompson is the fight to make if Michael Venom Page wins. Because it, go look up his highlight. The guy has one of the nastiest knee knockouts ever. Literally, like, cave the guy's skull in, in Bellator. <laughs> All right, so talk to me about the 125ers. What, did you, what were your takeaways for that? Yeah, I mean, Pantoja, I mean he's the Pantoja guy, Pantoja right? and, uh, and, and Robial. Robial. Pantoja and Brandon Marino is one of my favorite fights of this year. I mean, all every time they fight, it was a scrap. And I'm just bringing it because Marino was the backup in this. I think outside of Brandon Marino, like, stylistically, Pantoja's just so good on the ground and quick it's so hard for and this is the second time they fought in same result so yeah i mean that one was pretty chalk but the main event the big story leon and colby leon edwards champ colby covington challenger we all can't stand colby covington and it went all five rounds mm -hmm. um and i felt like leon dominated four out of five of those rounds Colby's running around town saying that he broke something in the first round, which is why he didn't win, which I don't buy. 
Um, but I do think that Leon did dominate the fight and did do enough to retain his belt. I, I think he was overmatched. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Colby was overmatched by Leon. I, well, I don't think Colby had any business being in that octagon. Well, I mean, and, and another thing is, <coughs> is, one, the busyness. You know, Colby hasn't fought. And stylistically, you know, what I was thinking it was going to go more, like I'm not surprised by the decision. We were going to see, like, more kicks and, and kind of how he, he neutralized Usman. But Kobe's pressure wasn't even there. It yeah. Was, it was like a shell. And he, could it be age? Could it be rust? And it's also, he was I like, I had a lot of ring rust. Every, oh, you think? Well, every, well, I mean, don't let Dominic Cruz know that. He doesn't believe he exists. And he's come back and gone on tears. I mean, it was just a stylistic. He doesn't have any more there. That, and Leon has evolved so much. Leon used to be a similar fighter. I mean, a strong grappler. Then his striking evolved. And this is that champ confidence. Like, that champ experience. Yeah. Um. And Kobe, if he doesn't put on the pressure, it's, he doesn't have a lot to answer. Okay, so what's next for Leon? Uh, Bilal Muhammad has to be. He doesn't want to fight Bilal. He doesn't want to fight Bilal. Dana White will say you'll fight who we Because there's no, well, one, everybody else is booked. You know, he's talking, you know, I heard like Gilbert Burns, that makes no sense. Also, Gilbert Burns is about to fight a number 11th guy. It's Bilal. Why? Because Bilal is dangerous. That first fight was very competitive. Blah puts on, it's gotten even better that, with his pressure. That fight shouldn't have counted. Yeah. That well, lasted about a round and was ended due to and, an eye poke. And both fighters have evolved since then and have gotten yes, both of them. Yes, that was better. so many years ago. And, and the thing that Blah can do a little bit better than Usman, even though Usman did a lot in that second fight up until the head kick, is he mixes the boxing up so well now. Mm -hmm. Look what he did with Burns, and that was a 10 day notice fight, and his wrestling, his wrestling pressure, where. Where Usman, he's going to get you down, but he's more there to just beat you up. It's quick. Bilal is that, that grinding, that smothering, and it is so frustrating. I agree. I want it to be Bilal with my whole heart, but I feel like Leon is just dodging him, which makes me upset. When well, it, I mean, there's no one else unless he wants Shavon. I don't know that anybody wants Shavon right now. <laughs> he might, actually, though. Like, for whatever reason, I feel like he just doesn't want to fight Bilal I, again. He's, like, been there, done that. I don't need to see it again. I think when you're in a position like... Leon, now you see that money, that pay-per-view points. Because Kobe does draw just because nobody likes him. And he says outlandish things, you know. He's not Conor McGregor, but people want to see him lose. Right. With Bilal, everyone loves Bilal. And now that you have that money, you know, like you want to do what's financial. But at the end of the day, you got to be like George St. Pierre. And you just got to go through the division. Um, and Bilal's the next guy. After that, it's either Shabbat or a bunch of rematches. Yeah. I mean, you know? like I said, hope it's Bilal. But no. we will see. All right, let's get through this really quickly. Uh, Mavs and Stars. We talked through a lot of stats and stuff last week. Did we see any improvement? I know that the Stars, you were at the Kraken game Monday night. It was. They're in action right now as we speak down the street um, with uh, the Canucks. Canucks. Yeah. Yes, Canucks are actually a pretty good team this mm. year. And then I also saw after they beat the Kraken that they took the top spot in the, in the division. Mm. Um, so a little bit of good news there, but you know, you said it best. You were like, I think, uh, yeah, that game was crazy. We were up three to one. Next thing I know we're going to overtime and then they scored an overtime goal, which was very rare for us. Um, so how are you feeling about the stars now that you've seen them in person and you're going again next week? Yeah. I mean, well, they got over that mental for now overtime hunt. Uh, the only thing that does concern me a little bit still, I mean, they were up 3-1 in the defense, and we keep talking about that. For majority of that game, they were dominating from, like, period to period. But at the end there, like, the last half, like, I mean, here comes about the crack. Which, by the way, Kraken aren't bad. I mean, they're like 8-9, but they're growing. But Kraken surged at the end of last season yeah, and made the playoffs. Yeah. And then they pushed us in the playoffs. And, and, and they're, build, they're still building. So that's my concern is obviously you're the superior team. And, you know, here they come back. With that being said, the fact that they were able to pull it, I think they are still streaking. Uh, what's his name? Duchene doing really well. Yeah. Thomas Harley, he's been, he was the overtime score win. Yeah. yeah, overtime And score. Robo is the only <coughs> veteran right now. He is playing like it. So I'm excited about that. Just there's going to be some teams where you can't let him back in like that. So How do you feel about your New Jersey? Oh, my hints. Love Best assister in the in the in the league. A yeah. sister. Yeah. Well, his assist. I mean, he's so quick. Love Rupe. Um, Rupe hence. But um, I mean, if you look at almost every freaking goal, he is a part of that. So, what you need, you need. 
Do you think he leads the league in quote unquote hockey assists or the second assist? Because I feel like he knows how to like set everybody up. Well, Ben is actually up there with though. He's have over what five hundred assists. I mean, he's up there. But for these guys coming up, he's definitely got to be. I don't know if the stat off of up there, you know, top two, top three. Uh, he's always there. I, I look for him. I'll rep your jersey, man. <laughs> He felt it. That's how um, I feel. I have a Jamie Ben jersey, yeah. and I got him to sign my jersey, which was one of the most awkward experience encounters ever in itself. But, like, I just I always feel, like, special in his jersey. Hey, when you rep somebody, you want to see them go that extra mile. And I, I feel like, I mean, I believe in Pete DeBoer, so. Uh, and that's a, we're another team that barely lo rarely loses back-to-back. -back. I mean, we're 18-8 and eight right now. Um, I'm excited to see what they do come February. Yeah, definitely. And we, we talk about this all the time. Like, it's so early in the mm -hmm. season. So, like, being stoked about being the top team in November, December means nothing if you're not the top team in March or April. And I'll make a real quick point because right off the bat, Wedgwood, our backup goalie, took a nasty puck to the collarbone. Oh, really? We thought it was a throw. And we're like, that could be disastrous. Uh, but he played through it and he held in there. Good to know. Uh, so, I don't even know. I think Ottinger's in goal tonight, I want to say. Yeah, he's been out for a couple games, lower body injury. So, I mean, definitely good to have him back also to give Wedgwood rest. Yes. You know, Wedgwood that's, is, that's why you have two goalies. So that, well, they called up somebody else, you know. That's right, up. they yeah. did. So, I mean, it happens, these goalies, you know. Yeah. Okay, what about the Mavs? I know we, we played last night. Mavs played the Clippers and lost by 11, 10, mm -hmm. 11, something like that. Um, Luca's still averaging 35-plus points a game over the last stretch. Uh what did you see with the Clippers? Like, everyone keeps talking about how the Clippers are, like, one of the top-tier teams in the West, uh, especially now that they've acquired James Harden, and they seem to be working that rotation real well with Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, James Harden, and Russell Westbrook. Yeah. Well, I think I felt like more last night compared to Denver's loss, we beat ourselves and fouls, right? Yeah. Dallas penalties don't just stick with the Cowboys. Dallas penalties. You know, that is our, but that is. Dallas sports, lots of fouls. A lot of fouls. No defense. Yeah. And uh, except for the Rangers. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you, as you mentioned, you put 35. I feel like still everything goes on his plate so much. And this is what we talked about from the beginning. We need more of that supporting cast. Like, we need more of that step up. Yeah, we're approaching the trade deadline mm -hmm. and a big Christmas matchup with Phoenix. We need a big guy. Let's go get that big, big guy. Or just get that uh, get that alternative guy that if, if you know Kyrie and that, like, we need that step-up guy. I'm telling you, you need a guy on the wing that can play defense and hit threes. Why is that so hard to ask for? So, Dodo, come back. <coughs> <laughs> Bring him back. That would be a Chris, ultimate Christmas present for Luca. Because you know he wants to go back. I know the the stars, yeah. uh, not the stars, the Mavs admin posted a TikTok this week, and it was like giving former players friendship bracelets. <laughs> and so they had one for like Christian Wood. They had one for um, like Nate Hint, uh, Nate Hinton, Hinton. I forgot his name. Uh, but a whole bunch of them. But when she got to Dodo, he was like, oh, "Is this for me? Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> it was so cute." Yeah, no, he definitely. I think he definitely wants to be back here. I mean, I, I mean, he was part of a, a, a potential championship run a couple of years ago, you yeah. know, and the vibe, the chemistry, he would, he would get right. And the back fans in. miss him. Yeah. And if that means I get to see less of Dwight Powell, I'm okay. I know with you'll it. be sad, uh, <laughs> but hey, I'll tell you someone I'm still very thoroughly enjoying right now as a rookie is Derek Lively. Yeah. He has stepped up in a big way. and um, See, that's why I don't think we necessarily need a big man. Maybe not a big guy. But, but you do need a long body mm -hmm. who is going to get rebounds and who could play some defense. I don't necessarily need a big scorer. I would like him to be able to hit some threes because uh, he'll probably be open. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for me, the important thing for this team is to rebound the ball because yep. we simply cannot. you got to get those rebounds. Don't do them in relationships, but do them on the court. No, you should do them in relationships. Well, it depends on the uh, toxic. It depends on if it's no, good. No, no, no. Okay. This is a debate now. We All are right. doing. We are getting into we this. Are, here's a good pouring take. Here's a good pouring take. Rebounds are actually a good thing in dating. Because you need that palate cleanser before you can move on. Right? If you go from, like, serious relationship to serious relationship without a rebound situation, what are you doing? Maybe it's only because I've been in the rebound situation. Oh! Oh, Charlie! I'm joking.
Kind of. Uh, it depends. If it's a positive, it just depends on what that, you know, I, I just kind of fill with the expectation. But you just got to, you know, if you can sense that this person right here is getting really, then just be honest there. Yeah, you can be honest and you can break up and then go have some fun and do some dumb shit. But you're going to grow either way. So therefore, rebounds, not a bad thing. Well, that was our dating topic right there. We, wow. That's a whole different... Uh, that's going to be a fun clip for me to cut up yeah, later. Yeah. Well, anyways, Mavs, you definitely can go get rebounds. No, they need to rebound. Yeah. I mean, get, that's a rebound situation. Yeah. We can rebound this topic. All right. Okay. Anything else you want to talk through? Any other... Do you need dating advice? Do we, do we need to go down Here this road? Here we go. Let's bring up our, uh, you know, we'll get out the line and, you know... Maybe maybe we do a little poll like should there are rebounds. I'm not saying that they're terrible. I I think it just depends on expectations between the two people. As long as they're per, like I just feel it's a hit or miss. So you want to be told you're a rebound. I really like the truth. <laughs> All right. Well, we should be cut off now. Um, here we go. <laughs> One more. Yeah. Here we go. Oh. All right, guys. Well, thank you for tuning in. Have a happy holiday, and soon we'll see you. Happy New Year. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see you next week, and if not, Happy New Year. Cheers.